Welcome to the Brady Bunch of Autism, your source for family, parenting, and all things autism and special needs. Created by our family for your family. Live from the Ed Asner Family Center. And now your hosts, Nava and Matt Asner. Uh, Hello and welcome to Brady Bunch of Autism. This is Matt Asner and this is... Is that my intro? Yeah. Oh, hi everyone. I'm sorry. Wait a minute. Ta-da! Hi everyone. Happy Tuesday. I'm Nava Asner. And we're here coming to you live from the Ed Asner Family Center in Reseda, California. And we got a very interesting show today. We thought we'd talk about sleep stuff. I know that sounds very open, but you know, I for one am a guy that has problems sleeping and she can attest to that because she sleeps next to me. Um, with with giant earplugs, <laughs> but, firmly lodged in my ears. But I, I do have a problem sleeping. I am not a good sleeper. And uh, we're going to talk about the idea of um, how to sleep better and what are maybe some of the causes of not sleeping well. I certainly know a few. Uh, and I'm certainly guilty of a few. Um, so, and also, I think with our community, I was just reading about our friend Kate Movius talking about how she'd been up all night with her son. I think um, sleep disturbances, lack of sleep, um, sometimes no sleep at all, is very common in our community. And I know when our guys were younger, that was an issue. But I think you know, I would say, knowing some of our friends, we really. We really are lucky because our guys oh my were, you know, it it can be on the other side, like if we're having an event or something, Eddie will be counting down the minutes. It's 750, mama. It's 750 because he needs to go to bed exactly at eight o'clock every night. So there's good and there's positive. But that's kind of changed lately. It is. Yeah. You're right. It, Since it, he's turned 13, that's it's like, like an, his It's like thing. now an adult, so he can like... And, and he reminds me that, of that every day. Yeah. He's like, I'm a teenager now, Mama. I can stay up. But it's still like 8.30 pushing it. Exactly. So before we get before we get to our first guest, who's our director of mental health here at the center, um, we're going to just, you know, how, how's it going? What are we doing? What, we're in Starry Night. We're in My Starry favorite. Night. If you all have not seen the virtual, not the virtual, but the um, immersive Van Gogh, it is an incredible experience. It was you just, took Eddie to that? I took Eddie. Well, Eddie's favorite artist in the whole world is Van Gogh. As yeah. some of Eddie's fans know that Eddie um, is just, he's just obsessed with uh, Van Gogh. And, and that's one of his biggest um, inspirations. But going well, there... Um, I was a little wary because of, you know, we're still trying to be COVID safe and it was a little crowded, but everyone had their mask on and was, you know, kind of uh, strategically placed. But to Did me, it make nervous, a little bit. Yeah. Well, I always get a little nervous when I'm in closed, kind of confined We've all gotten spaces. kind of collectively agoraphobic during this time. Oh, I've always been. <laughs> so, um, but the music. But it was immersive. Was say, and oh, it's the music. You feel like you're in the world of Van Gogh, right? It really. It, and Eddie, I think Eddie did the greatest uh, analogy. He said, "Mommy, it's like being in a Blues Clues movie. We we like we skidooed into Van Gogh." Oh, that's funny. So it that's was funny. great. It's wonderful. It's worth every penny, and it's just amazing. So, will they be doing other exhibits for? Other I think artists? they currently. Well, there's a Monet. That there, we're, there is. Really. There is a Monet immersive that we haven't seen yet. Um, but I know that the immersive Van Gogh is now nationwide because I know people are seeing it all over. I think they're able to kind of be mobile now rather than uh, before it was like in Paris. And, you know, this kind of stuff is is, is now getting really, really popular. This kind of immersive stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know because a friend of mine actually just got into this business. So he's doing it now. So, um, he, he, you know, we'll have to kind of highlight his stuff when it comes out. Mike Lamb. Oh, okay. Um, so, uh, but, you know, I, I'm, I, for one, would want to see the Matisse. Okay. I would want to be immersive. That's in the not Matisse. out yet, though. I wonder if there's anyone out there. Who can create there, that for Maddie? Yeah, who can create <laughs> that for me? I wonder if there's anyone out there who would like. My, well, for- actually, my, my favorite artist of all time is Gauguin. Because I love the Tahitian stuff, and uh, Chris oh, yeah. and I are already making That's our great. plans for Tahiti. What about the immersive Jackson Pollock? Not one of my favorite. That'd be kind of weird, wouldn't it? 
or have a Jackson Pollock immersive where you can everybody gets a bucket of paint and you just, and you just it. splash. Yeah. Okay, that'd be fun. That's good. <laughs> so um, sign up for that. We, uh, you know, we have a new uh, a new film that we watched that that I think we can give a good review to, right? Um, two thumbs up. Big yes. thumbs up to Dune. Dune. We loved Dune. Absolutely loved it. The music Amazing was film. incredible. It it reminded me of like kind of like something feel, felt a little Blade Runner about it. And maybe that's why I loved it so much. But and that the lead, um, Timothy, I can never say Chalamet. his name. He's not one of my favorites, but he's he was really incredible good. in this. And um I can't remember the name of the dad, but he was incredible. He's in scenes from a marriage right now. He was also in Star Wars. Oh, you're right. Yeah. Right. But I think I think the um I think you know the whole thing. I mean, look, to me, I know a lot of people are kind of dogging it a little bit. Does They're it have little, mixed little, reviews? A little down on it. Huh. But but you know, for me, I thought it was um I it, it, you know, you could hold it up to any Star Wars film and I think it's it's you know Right up there. So, or better than some of the more I, recent I Star so. Wars movies. I, I loved it. I thought it was amazing. I thought it was a, a great tale, a great journey. Well, how and, how rare that you and I actually sit and watch a that. movie. Uh, and we agree, too. But we're, we're not on our phones half the time. No, it's you true. Know? So I, we, I, were, we were both really just like riveted the whole time. I was like a little kid. I was at the seat, at yeah. my seat. And I was like, look, I just couldn't believe it. I was, I thought it was so thrilling. Me too. Um, so, you know. Go out and see Dune. Um, or you can see it from your couch like we did. Yeah. But we're going to go. I think I, I think we'll go and, and see it maybe when we're away. I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? So um, we hope you're all healthy and uh, happy out there and taking care of yourselves and <clears throat> taking care of your mental selves. Uh, and that's a good segue for our guest. It's Chris. not really a guest. No. Chris is going to be a regular. She's our new yes. segment. Um, a weekly segment, and, and it's really bringing back check in, men, you know, checking in with your mental health e each week. And so. this is an important segment, so it's going to take the whole time today. So this is because it's an important situation. Sleep is really Sleep. important. <laughs> um, and well, you can't live without it, and you, I mean, you can go days and weeks without sleep and if you know me if i have even one night two two is my top I, forget about it i'm i can't i don't know how people do it i give them medals every day because i can't are you gonna I, give me a medal no definitely not <laughs> what i'm saying is you're you've been doing this for so many years that the two a couple hours of sleep yeah are, it's like your your norm well and i don't it crazy. doesn't i i know it sounds strange but it doesn't affect me in in that way it affects me in other ways. It affects my emotions and, and and the way I am. But but I think my work doesn't suffer. I mean, I, I guess I guess maybe <laughs> on national TV. We'll, we'll never know. Matt's work doesn't suffer. My work doesn't suffer. No. But no, but I, emotionally, it certainly takes a toll on me because uh, sleep is important. So let's bring in Chris and we'll start talking about this. And if you have if you have something to say out there, we're live. So. Come on, uh, let's hear what you have to say about sleep issues, sleep issues. So, Krissa, hello, hello. Hey, guys, here I am. And I, yes, I will be here each week doing a segment on mental health. Uh, it's, look at, you just were talking about Van Gogh. And uh, he had some serious issues going on there, but he was able to create some beautiful artwork and, um, you know, for all of us to really admire. Um, but mental health is, is very important, as is sleep. So I wanted to, to sort of make this uh, focused on, you know, some of your issues, Matt, that you've talked about. And I know Nava's talked about some type of um, during night terrors, night okay. terrors mm -hmm. the beginning of COVID, they were very mm -hmm. present for you. And that's probably a whole nother topic. But yeah. um, <laughs> that, that <laughs> that's a whole, whole nother session. topic. Um, but, you know, First and foremost, uh, absolutely, sleep is where we repair and mm -hmm. we are able to replenish our neurochemicals, our dopamine, our serotonin, and we're also able um, to get, so basically what happens is, you know, our body repairs at night, uh, we relax the muscles and our endocrine system and all those other things. And what happens is melatonin comes in, it helps to put us to sleep. 
and um, uh, our cortisol's reduced, and that's the stress hormone that we want to really reduce. And, um, you know, there's certain chemicals that start to relax us in the evening and prepare us for bedtime. Um, well, let's talk, let's talk about that. So, and cortisol is a thing that, that if you don't get enough sleep and your body starts to break down, I know we read a lot about that, how your cortisol increases stays and elevated. that's, and that. Mm -hmm. can you know trigger all kinds of other issues like what kind of issues? well like it's impossible to lose weight really for sure belly yeah. fat the cortisol really can cause that there we um, are i didn't say it crystal said it. um there cortisol and, and I, so crystal said it <laughs> cortisol. <true. laughs> um so no so you know i'll tell you what happens to me you want me to go through my my whole my yes, whole time i'd love to hear it so okay so at night this is my nightly routine so I get very tired at night and I, I get to a point where I, it's time for me to go to bed. We go to bed. I fall asleep. Um, I'm asleep for a couple of hours uh, and then I wake up. Uh, so usually around two, usually around two at night, two in the morning, sorry, mm -hmm. two in the morning, I'll wake up and uh, grab your phone. Well, I mean, I, I be don't honest. immediately this is grab where my we, phone. This is where we heal. So you have to be honest. But I don't immediately grab my phone. I, I actually I actually sit there with my eyes open for, you know, a good 10 minutes or so. And I realize that I'm not going to go back to sleep right away. So, yeah, I grab my phone. Um, because but I tell him all the time, if he had just, if, if you continued with that, looking at the ceiling and then like doing some sort of meditation, as soon as you grab the devil light, you're wide awake. Well, you took the words out of my mouth because mm -hmm. pretty much that that type of uh, awake thinking in the middle of the night is called barbed wire thinking. And Ooh. you really get trapped in it. And um, it's like a cycle where you might have worry. You might go through your to do list and then all of a sudden you're wide awake and you're trying to problem solve. Um, sometimes it's just worry mm -hmm. about what's going to happen in the future, the next few days. It's, a, it's an ang anxious wakefulness. I don't have, I don't have any worries. <laughs> uh, there are no worries in me. What are worries? I, no, of course I have worries. I mean, that's, of course, it's all about worrying. So, so what, what are you thinking at the 3 a.m., the 2 a.m.? What, what, what are some of your thoughts and feelings that come up? Well, see, one of my, one of my gifts is also one of my damnations, and that's, you know, I'll sit there and, and uh, you know, uh, my organization is all in my head. So, you know, I, I, I will, um, uh, if you ask my assistant, you know, he, he will tell you that I don't forget anything and it's all in here and I know who to write on what day and it's all in here. So I, I will actually go through that mm -hmm. in, the, in the middle of the night and I'll actually kind of cycle through this kind of parade of files you're going through your I'm files going through my files i'm accessing mm -hmm. my files yeah. and and i'm and it's not good no because I, at that point you you're secreting more of the cortisol so that's going to propel you to stay up and um the other part of it is is that now your body's awake and you're trying to reduce your potential anxiety or your worry yeah. um by taking care of these things that might be easier to take care of obviously during the day. But what happens in the middle of the night is you don't have typical distractors to redirect you. Mm. So you, during the day, if we enter into a place of worry or um, if we're overwhelmed, it's not gonna last us very long because we could get a phone call that's gonna redirect us in another way or we, we, we're gonna go eat you know, lunch and then all of a sudden we feel a little bit better and there's, but in the middle of the night when you're staring at the ceiling, there's not a lot to shift that for you. So you have to really consciously do it for yourself. Well, you know, you know, I think, I think that might add to my, I, I think that might add to my stress level in the middle of the night. Cause the last time I got woken up in the middle of the night was, was, uh, was when my dad died mm -hmm. uh, or was dying. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so I got a call at four 30 in the morning. And, and so I think maybe I have some PTSD in, in there. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I probably is, uh, my head is probably churning away, mm -hmm. telling itself, 
you're you're going to get a call and something's going to go wrong mm -hmm. and oh god mm -hmm. you know i'm sure that's what's going on that and a whole bunch of other stuff but but that that that's probably actually a really heavy thing and you know what and i, and I hadn't thought about it and until you said that it's been I, so mm -hmm. such a short amount of time yeah. i think yeah. that 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 that's still part of this kind of grieving awakefulness um, and it's and it it is it's like it's it's really that first year. It's not just about the first few months, and I mean it's not even months yeah. for for you. But also for both of you, um, the routine. I know Nava for you to speak to your mom every day on yeah. video, and Matt as well. I mean I've heard you talk to your father several times a day while we're mm -hmm. at the center, and that that routine is hard to shake. There's always this unconsciousness of is there something I'm missing. Um, should I give my mom a call or, oh, I haven't heard from my dad all day. You know, it's an unconscious. Chris is trying to make us cry right now. <laughs> and now I realize what's happening. Well, but no, I mean, that's really true. I, I think you're right. It's yeah. a healthy, um, you know, process that you're feeling right now is that you do miss that person consciously or subconsciously. And that routine is hard to break out of. Yeah. Well, let's talk about, I know that, that you know, I've talked to Matt at length. He's so tired of me saying the same thing over and over, but I really believe that the second he picks up his phone, it's all downhill. So what are things mm -hmm. that he can do instead of picking up his phone? We've, you know, I've got him a, um, a noise machine, like mm -hmm. a white noise machine. Um, yeah. I've suggested the earplugs because sometimes for me, if I hear anything, then that's a distractor to me. I'm now, such a light now, sleeper. I'm, I'm very different because I, if I put ear ear earplugs in my ears, I will actually start imagining that the, there's something going on, or the Golden State Killer. There's something coming. going on in our room that that shouldn't be going on. So, um, and I can't help it. Like I can't go out and put ear, um, I can't go out and put air AirPods in my ears uh, and walk or run. I, I can't. So I can't you like do to it. have vigilance. Well, I just, I don't know. You want to be aware yeah, of your you surroundings. Want to be aware yeah. of your surroundings. And I actually, I don't know how people do that. No, um, I, I think it's, it, well, especially in LA, we yeah. have a huge homeless population and we need to be a little vigilant as we're walking. And so, so vigilance is important to you and you want to make sure that you um, are aware and you, you're kind of maybe that guy that sleeps with one eye open to be a little. No, I sleep with both eyes open. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> to kind of check your environment. Yes. I, I get it. I'm a light sleeper. I, I can hear the raccoons outside my window rustling in the trees. Um, but I think Nav is absolutely right that the blue light, and I know there's a filter on a lot of our phones. Apparently it causes us to have an awakefulness in the middle of the uh -huh. night. Um, but if we go back to some of the thoughts that occur in the middle of the night, maybe you're missing your dad, you're thinking about that person you need to contact the next day, or you're making your to-do list, um, you're not actually in a place of healing your physical and emotional wellness because you're churning. And mm -hmm. so, and at night we lack the coping skills to deal with a lot of stuff. We, we were really left alone in the dark with our thoughts. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, other than you waking up Nava trying to process what's going on. The, he knows better. <laughs> yeah, so. He knows better. Don't that would be a bear. big, that no, be a that big, would yeah. be big mistake. Poking the tiger. Big, okay. big mistake. So, so you're really left on your own to have some coping skills at night. And that's what I would suggest is that people come up with at least two or three things mm -hmm. ahead of time to be preemptive that what could you do in the middle of the night? And some suggestions are that, you know, like Nava stated earlier, meditation, and one of those ways is just to listen to your breath is that you do the breathing in and you do the breathing out and you do that for 10 times. And as a thought comes up, you start listening to your breath again. And so that this rhythmic sort of breathing can really help to relax your body. If it doesn't um, seem like that you can do this on your own, there's stuff on Netflix now called Headspace. There's, you know, the Calm apps and those kind of things or the ocean. You talked about white noise machines. Mm -hmm. um, so that there's ways to start bringing coping skills into your nighttime routine. And uh, if you look at, um, uh, I sent you an article I'm earlier. What about, what about a he, bit actually getting out of bed? What about rather than him yeah. grabbing his phone? There he is realizes he's in that spin. So he literally gets out of bed, 
goes into the kitchen. I yes. mean, I know they talk about having hot milk or stuff like that, but just the act of getting up and going to the kitchen and getting even a drink of water or whatever. Yes. It um, redirects you. Yeah. But and I mean, and then your body, you feel like it, it connects you more with your body because sometimes you're laying there and you're kind of just like in your head completely. If you get up and actually go into the kitchen, then you realize how physically tired you really are. And it kind of like you're starting from the beginning because you you fall asleep like in within seconds yeah, in the night. I do. Well, to me, that to me, that doesn't make much sense. Because <laughs> no, actually, there's a study that says don't let yourself stare at the ceiling for more than 10 to 15 minutes. After that, get up, be in a dimly lit, lit room and do one activity so you can feel a little successful. And then that might bring about that you are reducing your worry or that need to do something and accomplish something. And then you can get back into bed. Like I, for example, sometimes I get up and do the dishes. I, I might take about um, five to 10 minutes to do the dishes. And I feel a little bit more accomplished in the middle of the night. You yeah. Do the dishes oh, wow. in the middle of the night. <laughs> the of oh my the God. Night. We've got some over at our place. So. <laughs> wow. Um, so, I, um, and then that's, that's enough for me to, to be able to calm down and go back to bed. Really? Mm -hmm. Doing yeah, the why dishes. don't you go do the dishes in the middle of the night? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. He doesn't do so, that during the day. <laughs> yeah. So um, interesting. Okay. So what I usually do now, like the last couple, like the last couple of months, I think I've been reading. Oh, that's another choice. Actually, so, choice. And I don't read on the book. I don't read by the book. I actually read on my phone. Oh. So I have some novels that I bought on my phone that I that I will you know kind of look at. I wonder through. how how similar that is though. If it's a computer Nook or right. Kindle or whatever, to me that's well actually so yeah. I mean I could similar go, to I looking could, at the phone. Well, yeah. the Kindle's probably better than the phone, but the Kindle doesn't have a backlight. See, the problem is I'm in the Isn't dark. Isn't it about stimulating your brain though, Chris? I mean, he's still stimulating his brain but in the middle of the night. Allow calm for the body because when you're in some type. I mean, having a book, like the analog version of holding a book with yeah. pages, it could offer a sensory experience where you're actually feeling very relaxed because um, that's the goal is you want to relax the body. You want to get yourself into a calmer place. And so, I, I mean, I could read two pages and I'm out. You well, know? I, actually, I actually have enjoyed reading at night, but, um, but my problem is that... Um, you know, it's it's dark, and so I'll I'll need I need, I need something backlit mm. in order to to see it. So you might have um, to get up and leave the room and go to a place where your you know your spouse yeah. or your partner isn't, and then just you know try to get some uh, reading in that is providing calm. I mean, you know, like you said, um, Nava, it, you know, he doesn't want to disturb you in the middle of the night. So mm -hmm. sometimes there is those apps that have rhythmic sort of like waves or yeah. calm rain but maybe you could put one ipod uh, pod in and you see that that doesn't work for me it doesn't no because well I, 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 you, matt you've never tried like and i've said that to you over and over that the the rain rain drop app no we is so we have that soothing. noise machine and we put it on and i start kind of like I, you know, I close my eyes and I listen it's to this not, noise machine. It's but, white noise. But it's not the same as and the raindrops. That's and here's what we the have. other option. You're going to have to pull yourself out of it. And that is CBT. Some type of cognitive behavioral therapy. Oh, I thought you meant CBD. <laughs> You're going to have to start <laughs> no. chewing CBD. <laughs> no. Well, I mean, some people. Yeah, that does. And stuff. Yeah. Um, but pretty much you're going to have to reframe your thinking. You're going to yeah. have to start to give yourself your own instructions of I'll give myself 10 minutes on the phone and then I'm going to put it away. And you're going to have to introduce some type of plan of action for you and, and hold yourself to it. And if that means writing down post-it notes, uh, cues, so you can read the post-it note ahead of time, what would work for you again, developing your own coping skills in the middle of the night that you can utilize, um, maybe journaling, yeah. Your paper. What is your reasoning for not wanting to get up? It's just like What's you're too reason? cozy. You don't want I'm to get out of bed. Very cozy. <laughs> I'm very cozy. I, it's I, the bed. Our bed, our bed is really cozy. We have really the world's cozy. greatest bed. But you no, have but to I'm, reset I'm, yourself. I'm saying somehow. that you should try that. I think you should try I that. I know what I should do. I think I should get up at night, 
in the middle of the night if I do feel the that. Dishes. No, I just do the dishes. But I, I should laundry. I should go have some cookies. Cookies and milk. And I think if I have some cookies, so that's if you have blondies every night, I think I, that'll I definitely have a help your night. cortisol. <laughs> My cortisol will be all out of control. Sugar, you'll be like back in the same place in a few hours. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I, if Let's you have enough that. sugar, you could crash from sugar. You <laughs> yeah, know? you could. So, but first um, you'll have the up. And then you'll have yeah. to brush your teeth again. No, but, and, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. uh, chamomile tea works, sleepy time, um, some of those hot beverages. Actually, I should have. That, that's actually true. Uh, chamomile, sleepy time, those kind mm. of teas. Those are lovely. Those are good. They really do. But like help. I said, I don't have any problem like falling asleep. I have a problem staying asleep. Okay, so, so then that's also um, the theory there is, and I and I'm not sure exactly, but one of them is that falling asleep is um, to, you easy to fall asleep is depression. Waking up in the middle of the night is anxiety. I'm sorry, I got that backwards. One wait. of them is like it's hard to fall asleep where you're up for hours. And that might be depression. <laughs> Waking. I have to research and get back to you next. Let week. me know because I want to know which um, one I am. I'm definitely the <laughs> the spinning in the on because you fall right to sleep. So I'm just like spinning before that was I like, fall asleep. That was like so when I was uh, talking anyway, to you about Matt, Matt, uh, uh, Matt, Matt, snore. That's snore. just the way I am. But um, do you um you know that one article I sent you? Have you looked at any of the suggestions for treatment? Oh well, let's look if at you, that right yeah, now. Yeah, so, we'll look at it tonight at two o'clock in the morning. There you go. Yeah. No, so here's treatment. So go to bed only when sleepy. Well, I'm always sleepy, so okay. I, I guess I should go to bed all the time. Um, if the individual is unable to sleep, get up. He or says, she should get, get up. up. Oh, okay. Until That's you get sleepy again. There we go. All right. Um, Maybe I'll start doing that. Okay. You, you could do a little walk around the house. Avoid or maybe... napping. Stay up until sleepy. Well, we're sleepy when we go to bed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Avoid napping. I don't really nap. No, I don't think you're I don't a napping really nap. guy. I'm not a napper. We don't have the time. Um, stick to a schedule. Wake up and go to bed at we the do, same we time. We do daily. that. Pretty for much sure. we do that. Um, Using light, light therapy. Interesting. Here we go. Light therapy. Using light therapy with a light box to help reset the internal clock is also a useful technique. Well, that's mm -hmm. if you're, if you're, daylight you know, savings yeah, time. If you're, mm -hmm. um, you well, know, here's something interesting. Yeah, because we okay. wake up early and it's so, pitch dark outside. Well, here's the interesting thing, though. Like, I'll travel. I'll go to New York or Chicago or someplace, and but I will I will wake up at the same time. So, like in Hawaii, we, we're in Hawaii. Even back east, yeah. We'll wake up. Do you even remember what we do when we go to Hawaii? It's been so long. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. Um, but I will I will wake up. So if in, if I'm in New York. Um, it doesn't matter where I am. I wake up at the same time. So I'll, I'll wake up at 6 a.m. in New York, just like I wake up at 6 a.m. here. So definitely my body is trained right. to, That's your react, to react to the sun mm -hmm. and the moon. So for sure, I'm on track there. Perfect. Um, you just have to get your body's 2 a.m. clock up. To yeah, turn no, I just have to get my anxiety or whatever, depression but, or whatever you know, you I were, feel. You were just saying earlier in the show that you... Um, you know, it's okay. Nava said it's okay if you're not sleeping, you're still able to function and all that. Yeah. But I, I, you know, it really does affect our oh, mood no, no. I and our emotions. Need to sleep. Yeah. I know that. It's I know that I need to sleep. And no, and I and I feel, I definitely feel, like, I'm missing something. I I feel like there is something missing because I'm not sleeping. And the other so. piece there is that we need to dream. We have to enter. There's yeah. so many different levels of sleep. There's the alpha waves, the delta waves, all of those. The gamma um, waves. The gamma waves. Like the fantastic four. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Um, but we have to get to a certain level of REM sleep in order for our mind to relax. And we dreaming is necessary for us. Some people remember their dreams. Some people don't. Um, but it helps us to replenish and to make sense of our world. And, you know, unconsciously we're going through our day or things that have been upsetting to us or happy things, and we're trying to still process. So um, that's important too. You have to allow yourself to get to a certain level of dreaming, um, whether or not you remember what, how, what happens. How, how much of it do you think has to do with uh, with COVID? Oh, the, the pandemic it has been, uh, there's been studies done that it's really um, been a huge uh, sleep disturbing stressor uh -huh. for us. Well, and I, and I, I've actually, but you've always had this. 
I mean, that you can't no, learn I know. this on COVID. But actually, though, I, I mean, I think it I think it did get worse with COVID. Yeah. Because I, I you know, I'm kind of the guy that, that will read the news and, and um, I, I look at the news mo most of the, most every day and. And but not in the middle of the night. That's the well. Worst I try not ever. to do that. Anymore. Yeah, but you were do doing that, that. You were doing that. So I think definitely that. But I mean, I, I, I look. I'm, I'm worried. I look at the news. I see this. Is, you know, there's a new Delta variant called Delta Plus, and you know that's scary to me. Mm -hmm. And even though it sounds like, like a, a bonus thing for Delta Airlines, <laughs> it sounds like you get more, more you get more, you leg, get more leg room, right? <laughs> Delta Plus. <laughs> but I mean, it's it's like, um, I, you know, wow. You know, I just. I think there's a part of me that every night I wake up and I just think, you know, let's, you know, I, I hope we transition out of this and do a, you know, a better right. place for all of us. You, you go to and, solutions. Some mm. people in the middle of the night try to go to solutions and try to work their stuff out. And, and what's the remedy here? What's the, the best thing I can do to get out of this? Now we have to remember that the, the COVID virus is the unseen enemy. Yes. And we have a really hard time directing our anger at somebody uh, we're angry, we're frustrated, but some people talk about feeling a sense of loss of time, loss of social connection. Well, there we go. I mean, that 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 can affect sleep right there. Mm -hmm. um, but it's interesting because I went, I went out walking the other day and I was telling you now that, you know, I, I went through our neighborhood and I walked up and down and I was amazed at the amount of people that are decorating their houses. And I mean, really, really decorating their houses for Halloween. It's amazing to me. I mean, we we would walk through our neighborhood a couple of years ago, you know, even a year or yeah, two ago. Yeah, we had the worst Halloween you know, neighborhood. No Nobody one decorated. would decorate. No one. Now, every other house is decorated. Mm -hmm. and, and I mean, when I say decorate, I don't mean like, you know, one little sign that says boo. I mean, they are going all you out. Know, there's this ah, witch lives here. You yeah. Know? This is like serious stuff. Well, people they, have missed. They've missed celebrating. I mean, I we, so. we, we here at the center, you know, we, we put up our decorations for the first time in how almost what, two and a half years. We need a return to the witch of the center. The witch <laughs> of the center needs to come back. Well, it speaks to our spirit that we're very resilient and we love to social. celebrate. Yeah, we're, we're social. very social. And the other thing is too, is that a lot of us haven't been spending money on entertainment the way in which we would have. Um, we have our streaming, but we're not going to the movies and paying $18 for a ticket and $10 for popcorn. Yeah. So, you know, to buy these little treats for ourselves, it's like retail therapy to go get mm -hmm. another thing for the front lawn and, um, or for the holidays for Hanukkah or Christmas to decorate. We, we love to do these things. We're festive. We're, we're social animals. No, no we, we have the kids for Halloween, don't we? Mm -hmm. So we're going to go out. We're going to go, actually, we're going to go trick or, trick or treating in our neighborhood. Wow. And we're going to see. Over. We're, we're going to see what, what it's like, because I don't think we've ever really done that in our neighborhood, have we? With Panda. We're gonna oh, have to be, yeah. she, she's going to be a wreck. We're going to have to give her oh. a chewable gummy or whatever. <laughs> she should dress up. She No, she's such a... Do you have a costume for her? Yeah. You do? I do. What do we have for her? What she's going to be a moose, because Eddie wanted her to be a moose. <laughs> she's going to be a moose. She has she a moose costume. A panda moose. <laughs> a, a panda moose. So, um, all right. So, you know... Sleep important, but I think um, I, I think here? you I think the moral of the story is you're so used to your routine, even if it's the negative routine. Mm -hmm. So the first step is breaking out of your constant, and okay. your constant mm -hmm. is, oh, it's two o'clock in the morning. I'll just look at my phone. I'm too cozy. I don't want to get out of bed. I think what we learned from today is let's try something new because this. I definitely notice an increase in your sleep disturbance after mm. our tragedies, you know, and now it's, you're getting a little bit better. I mean, I, the first month after your dad passed, you weren't sleeping at all. No, and I was very true. worried. Yeah. And now it's getting a little bit better, but I still see that, you know, and you are waking me up by the way, in the middle of the night. Really? Oh yeah. Oh, you're, you're still Just because any light, I'm such a light sleeper that any light will wake me up so well matt your yeah. homework is to get a post-it note out and write down three coping skills that you can do in the middle of the night well the one thing i'm definitely going to do is and, uh, and we can we don't, can talk about yeah, the dishes <laughs> don't, turn the that, dishes. don't turn that don't turn the devil light on no, until you leave the room we're going to do this we're going to um, this is my this is my homework um if i wake up in the middle of the night which i will i will leave the room yeah 
and I will spend some time reading in another room. Uh, maybe I'll do the dishes. Maybe analog with <laughs> um, a, a book. Maybe an analog, maybe a Kindle, because that's kind of a little more low fi Tactile, okay. Um, so I will do that, and I will report back next week Yes. on we'll how that's going. Now, also, you can pet Panda if Panda doesn't stay in your room, if she comes out no, and she's follows a, you. She's, she's we keep crazy. her locked. Oh, she's, no, she's actually really happy in her she's crate. I'm sure we'll get too. some hate mail, but no, she, her crate is literally right next to our bed. It is okay. the most soothing thing in the and world. She goes she to walks bed right exactly in. at the same time like Eddie every night. No, she walks into her cage. Yeah, she she important. feels she feels she uh, very comfortable. So warm so yeah, hair. or um, you know, uh, be able to uh, make yourself some tea, even the chamomile or the sleepy time. Whole Foods has when a lot you of leave good. the room, okay. no, you're going to do all this. <laughs> so that is what I will do, and I yes. will report back yes, next week. Next week, and and actually and next week going. we're going to be, we're actually going to be coming to you in Hawaii um, from I wish from Laguna. Yes, we're going to have a little uh, staycation because it's our seven year anniversary. And what day is that? What date is that? Uh, well, our our actual anniversary is on Monday. So Did you forget Tuesday. already? No, I know that. It's November second. Tu Tuesday the second. No, we Tuesday the first is our anniversary, but we'll be coming to Tuesday you from the second. Laguna Beach. Yes. And we have a huge announcement. But we're still going to have Krissa. Huge I'll be here. announcement on the same big. day. Ooh, big announcement. Same oh, day. Oh wow, oh, nice. Big, will big, it be big. before? Will the announcement yes. be before? But we we'll, early we'll, in the morning we'll, on the on we'll the second. We'll re-announce it on the show next Tuesday. Look at look at your look at your uh, uh, inboxes on the second. And uh, wait for this announcement. And your it's mind is—it's going to be Dune level, mind blowing. Oh. It's a doozy. It's Dune level. The, That's going to be I, the name. I'm, I'm going to say it's one of the greatest things we've ever done, and I'm so proud of it. So, um, can't wait for you guys to hear about it. You're going to have to wait though till the second of November. Alrighty. I'm a little loopy because I haven't slept. <laughs> so um, until next week, we say goodbye. Uh, keep your seatbelts fastened, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>